Hello and welcome to another episode of Hashtag Disruption Dialogues, a Markets and Markets podcast series for growth-minded strategy, market intelligence and competitive intelligence professionals. Today our host Pranjal Sharma is in discussion with Marcus Halto. Hello and welcome to another episode of Disruption Dialogues. I'm Pranjal Sharma. I'm an author based in New Delhi, India. And I'm in discussion with Marcus Halto. He's the Vice President, Head of Global Commerce Processes and Regional EMEA Catalyst at Evonik Industries. Thanks, Marcus, for joining us. Hello, Pranjal. Thanks for having me in your show. Marcus, we're going to be talking about making chemicals green. I think it's a very interesting and important topic because chemicals are invisible, but they are in every part of our life. We have a lot of dependence on chemicals, but when you think of chemicals, the image that comes is of something which is toxic, something which is hurting humans, something which is hurting the environment. Now, we cannot live without chemicals, but what we can do is make chemicals better for everybody. And this is where I think an expert like you is very important for us to have a discussion with. How are the chemicals becoming better? What are the processes which are making chemicals green? That's a great question, Pranjal. And I think the first topic I like to emphasize here is we are developing a catalyst in my business division. And uh, catalysts are the enabler to make chemicals at all. So we should know that uh, almost 80% of the chemical reactions only take place because a catalyst is present. So without a catalyst, most of the chemicals we will not be able to produce. And in that sense, catalysts are playing a crucial role for making chemicals in general, but also making chemicals green. And so the enabler, which is a catalyst here, can support our customers to get their sustainability goals uh, set and to achieve those goals. And this is not only to reduce energy because you use a catalyst, uh, because you can reduce heat uh, release, you can reduce CO2 emissions in your chemical processes, but also you will have uh, much less waste and much less uh, side products uh, in your process uh, stream. And you can specifically tailor the uh, catalyst and also the technology you are using to tailor the product slate you like to have. This is a great effect of catalysts in general. What is a catalyst? You know, catalyst itself is a chemical, uh, isn't it, uh, Marcus? So you very rightly explained that a catalyst can make a chemical process better. But can you help us understand what is a catalyst and How exactly is the catalyst making a difference? Yeah, sure. So the catalyst is basically a material which is uh, decreasing the activity level of a chemical reaction. And because of that, uh, you need less energy that a reaction takes place at all. And and therefore, uh, the catalyst is directly impacting the energy level of a a chemical reaction and therefore uh, reducing it, uh, for example, with less pressure, with less temperature, or on a different uh, temperature level at least. And and also, and this is the the other effect of a catalyst, you can specifically tailor the catalyst to the desired uh, product you want to have. Yeah. So especially if we talk, for example, about the refinery where you have oil uh, or nafta as the input, um, you are desiring uh, different products out of that uh, huge plant you can tailor the catalyst directly to this product you like to have. And that is a crucial piece of each and every uh, chemical reaction and basically chemical plant uh, one is using. And I think here we also can attach the first thing where catalysts can make a difference because catalysts are actually not worn out. The only thing is catalysts get poisoned in the chemical reaction. So that means the active ingredient on the catalyst is maybe blocked by another chemical. And we are able to uh, reduce those blockages and clean up, so to say, uh, the catalyst again. For hydroprocessing catalysts, for example, we call this rejuvenation. That is one technology we are offering as Evonik, uh, where I'm working. And and here we are able to bring back uh, the performance of such a catalyst up to 80%, 90% as a fresh catalyst. This has a direct impact not only to the environment, but also to uh, catalyst users, of course, because there is a lower raw material consumption, for example, to produce a new catalyst instead. And uh, it has a direct impact in CO2 emissions and the actual footprint of every catalyst user. But where are these being used, Marcus? I think uh, you mentioned oil industry, but I can imagine that these are relevant. The chemical processes have to be improved for pharmaceutical industry, it can be for the textile industry, it can of course be in other fuels which are being used. 
so what i can estimate is that this kind of process would be relevant for nearly every industry which is manufacturing or creating a product you are absolutely right yeah so we have to produce catalysts in in all the different chemical fields basically yeah so what i was referring to here as a hydro processing catalyst uh, which is very prominent of course over the past decades in the petrochemical industry but also in pharmaceutical industry you probably have different catalysts like more precious metal based catalysts or nickel based catalysts so always uh, metals are playing a role here as a active ingredient and um, and here it is the same basically yeah so we can keep that precious metal because not only it's precious yeah because it's really the key element of that catalyst we can keep it in the loop and we take back as such poisoned and less active catalysts from our customers we recover the precious metal and uh, so we can make use of that precious metal again yeah and produce a fresh catalyst and bring it back to the customer either this is in the pharmaceutical industry or if this uh, is in the food industry for example everyone is drinking coca cola and fanta and all these soft drinks uh, where sorbitol is used to sweeten the soft drinks and uh, sorbitol is uh, produced by a catalyst by a nickel catalyst basically yeah so you can see um, in every piece you are taking every day either this is a plastic thing here on your iPad or on your iPhone whatever you're using this is made plastics and catalysts are playing a vital role here that we can use these uh, materials uh, with all its uh, different applications now what are the new breakthroughs on this Marcus especially from what uh, Evonik is doing because one of the important points to understand a breakthrough is also to measure success. What is the outcome and the improvement uh, that you are achieving through your breakthroughs? Yeah, Pranjal, thank you. That's a great question. Yeah, And uh, that's an important question because for now I was only talking about the mature markets, about petrochemicals which are ongoing there for decades. But now uh, we all see this industry change. Uh, we see it at the petrol station, at least in Germany, <laughs> tremendously. Petrol is getting uh, more and more expensive. And so uh, there is a clearly shift uh, towards more sustainable fuel uh, solutions. Yeah, Also, uh, despite the fact uh, we want to have uh, more electrified cars, uh, there is a big demand, especially for uh, in the aviation sector, for example, uh, where there is a need of kerosene, uh, where we are able to make these kerosene out of uh, sustainable uh, sources. Yeah? Either this is uh, maybe bio-based ethanol, where we have catalysts in place um, to make uh, sustainable aviation fuel, SAF, so to say, or other e-fuel elements uh, where catalysts are playing a crucial role. These are the things which we have on our agenda, not only Evonik uh, as a catalyst manufacturer, but everyone, all the big chemical companies have such technologies on their agenda. And I think this will be uh, the future where catalysts are playing a very important role to make those uh, technologies uh, breaking through uh, visible for every one of us. Yeah? And uh, sustainable aviation fuel is only one example. We also can broaden that field to uh, to other plastics where we talk about recycling of plastics for example also there catalysts can play a role for uh, chemical recycling of plastics you cannot mechanically recycle for example so to keep uh, the carbon in the loop so to say uh, we are uh, taking part here in a major initiative in germany which is called carbon to chem it's a government founded project uh, where we are developing uh, catalysts um, to produce higher alcohols or respectively higher value chemicals out of syngas. Yeah? So for everyone who does not know what syngas is, syngas is basically a mixture of um, CO2 and hydrogen. Uh, and here uh, hydrogen comes into play. Yeah? So the more sustainable and green hydrogen we have, we can really make this shift in the chemical industry happen. And therefore it's also important uh, that we do not only have a catalysts in place to, to utilize uh, the different technologies and chemical processes, but we also need to have green hydrogen. This is the key for us to make this transition really happen. Now, when you, when you talk about these changes, is this happening only in Europe or do you see this kind of shift in the approach, the usage of these uh, smart new catalysts is this spreading across the world as well or is it only in certain parts of the world or maybe in one or two sectors but other sectors are perhaps uh, yet to adopt them 
Yeah, Pranjal, I have to say this is a global thing. Yeah, so we have we, we are talking to uh, customers and business partners all over the world, and that's not only a European initiative. I mean, many of the RDNI centers of large chemical companies are based in Europe, so maybe this is the seed in Europe. But we are also talking to uh, chemical companies in the Middle East, in Asia, in India, in the U.S., everywhere. So I think everyone um, needs to go through this transition, not only with uh, with hydrogen, but also to have more sustainable products. Yeah? And maybe Europe is a little bit the front runner here in that respect, because large uh, chemical companies are based here and a lot of R&I work is done here. Whomever I talk to, uh, either this is in the Middle East or in Asia, everyone is thinking about such processes, maybe on a different level, but for sure, this is something which we will see in the next uh, two decades for sure. Yeah, we have to do that. Otherwise, we are running into a huge problem. We have seen that in Europe in particular, uh, the heat waves uh, we are suffering from. And um, I think this is something where global warming, no one can deny it anymore. It's happening and we need to take action now to make this transition happen. Because one thing is for sure, to install and to build a new chemical plant with a technology which is new, which is not proven, yeah? This takes time and this takes money and this takes effort. Yeah? And this is something we have to start now, otherwise we are maybe too late, so I probably cannot secure for my children a good place anymore. Yeah? And I think this is something which should drive every one of us. These are very important points, Marcus, but when a company has to invest in something which is new, perhaps more expensive, it is really a small bunch of people who would look at the return on investment, they would look at the impact on the cost and the profit, and therefore while the larger issue of future and our uh, new generations remains important, sometimes the decisions are decided by the immediate urgency of managing costs and ensuring that our profits are not hurt. In this situation, when you talk to various companies, what is the suggestion you give? How should companies and business leaders look at this matter? Is there a business case that you offer for the return on investment in using green chemical processes? Yeah. That's a that's a valid question and and very important because you're absolutely right. Yeah? I mean, we have to we need to have a return invest uh, somewhere. Yeah, uh, the, the point is I do not have a business plan in my in my blueprint right now. Yeah, I mean this would be too easy. If I would have that, I would not sit here anymore. <laughs> but um, I think if companies are not starting that transition and this change today, they will lose out in the long run. Yeah, because more and more investors and shareholders are taking care that sustainability is uh, one of the the, the goals next to EBDA and other uh, financial key indicators. And so the sustainability footprint gets more and more important. Yeah? And I think also from a stakeholder level or investors point of view, it gets more important uh, for those guys that companies and their investments are having sustainability in their core. Yeah? And without that, I hope and I would expect that investors would not invest as much anymore. Yeah? And the other hand, if you have an investment in a new technology and respectively in a new plant, there are assets afterwards staying somewhere. So I think those investments are also uh, securing the foundation of companies not only to produce products but also there there is money set up in an in an asset and so as i as i said yeah i trust into uh, the shareholders and investors and we have seen that um, i think it was last year when blackrock one of the largest investors uh, globally yeah was announcing in a letter of the ceo to all this uh, companies he's investing in, where he said that sustainability should be and has to be in the core of each and every company. Yeah, without that, no money will flow anymore in such companies. And I think this is one great lever where we have to make use of. And um, every company which is changing now, or at least is going into that path to more and greater sustainability, I think is setting uh, the scene for its own future. The future is uh, almost here. Marcus and I think the impact of climate change is being seen. Uh, my final question to you is that as a domain expert and as a leader in this field, uh, what is your vision so that you feel that chemicals which are part of our everyday lives become better, more sustainable? Do you have a dream? Do you have a vision on how things can become better? 
My vision, Frangel, is that we cannot avoid chemicals. Yeah, we need to have chemicals in place because no one uh, wants to lose his gadget and things he's used to. So we need to have chemicals. And uh, I would like to see a higher recycling quote on the one side. And I would love to see the chemical industry in particular where I'm working. I would love to see brave decisions towards our future towards that transition and this change. In my own company, I can see that. Yeah, we are investing a lot of money in RD and I work into the future of our company, uh, where hydrogen is playing a key role for us uh, to make that transition happen. And I think this is also my personal driver yeah, because uh, I want to leave something to my kids when they are growing up. I want to leave something to my kids they can enjoy. And I have seen the world for the past decades and I also want to uh, have something to hand over to my kids so that they can uh, also enjoy living on that planet. Uh, but if we keep continue doing that, what we are doing today, I'm not sure what I can hand over at the end. Yeah. And I think this is something what is driving me uh, personally very much. And my vision is, yeah, that we make this transition happen and that we are uh, brave enough to take decisions which maybe look not as nice at the beginning, but being brave and uh, staying out, I think we can we can make this transition happen. Thank you, Marcus, for, for sharing this vision and also explaining to us the importance of green catalysts, which are making chemicals even better uh, for all of us and really appreciate the thoughts that you have shared. Thank you, Granjo. It was a pleasure for me being here in your show and it was really great. I wish you a nice day. Thank you very much. And to everybody who was listening in, thank you so much. I was in conversation with Marcus Artum. He's the Vice President and Head of Global Commercial Processes and Region EMEA Catalyst at Evonik Industries. Stay tuned for more such interesting episodes on Disruption Dialogues. Thank you for listening to Hashtag Disruption Dialogues. If you are a strategy or market intelligence professional, we invite you to join our community on LinkedIn, Hashtag Disruption Dialogues.